Hello and welcome back to Chaos Head Noah. My name is Mimi Dennis, and last time we started off by going home with Remy and just kind of finding out more about the new gen, new case, which is case seven, I believe, with the half body stuff. And talk me finding out that uh, it had the words DQN on it, and is now very suspicious of Shogun, like he always was. And Remy seems to be trying to make him think that you know it's all coincidence. Don't worry about it too much. These are all delusions. But Takumi knows that there's actually something else behind the scenes. And then afterwards, we went to the perspective of Ayase, who uh, we kind of saw her memories of her in the Ark Heart Hospital, where she was basically experimented on. It was kind of terrifying, to be honest. And later on, she was questioned by Sua about a whole bunch of stuff, like why she jumped, um, or whether or not she's a mage or some other stuff. But now I'm a little bit sus about Sua as well. And after that, we went back to Takumi's perspective, where he kind of like went through his old stuff, trying to find the essay that he wrote about whose eyes are those. And when, on the back, it showed like this whose eyes are those monster that he used to draw about. And uh, found out that the what was written on there was actually uh, something that he saw recently from Shogun. So yikes. And lastly, we went back to Bon and Yua and the Frisia office, where they just kind of talked about well, U.S. theories and why she was wrong, but also why the work that she put in was not put to waste. And confirm, confirm bomb suspicious about some weird magic stuff happening. But now we're back in the hospital. It's uh, in Takumi's perspective. I think we're about to visit Ayase. Yeah, it says that right there. But so yeah, let's go head right into it. When I went to school on Thursday, I got an unexpected offer from Misumi to go visit Ayase in the hospital. I hadn't thought of that at all, and it had caught me off guard. But for some reason, before I could answer, Rimi had said that she wanted to go. I ended up going along with them. Just to be clear, it's not that I was some cold person who didn't care about her. But with the threat of Shogun looming, I didn't have it in me to worry about other people. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't care about other people, my ass. I don't want to die. Misumi had gone in through the front door, but when he got to the lobby, he didn't seem sure what to do. What Yeah. Had he come all this way without actually bothering to check? If so, what an idiot. Outpatient wing. I wonder if they're even allowed inside, because previously it was mentioned that like people that knew her were kind of like, no, no, you can't come in. Oh, this is the patient ward. No time for you. I think the only people that really saw her were her band and like the detective, at least from my memory. Ah, uh, oh, AH <laughs> Tokyo General Hospital. I thought said, ah. <laughs> this was the hospital I come to ever since I was little. I had just been here a little while ago, in fact, so I had a pretty good idea of the basic layout. Suddenly, I remembered what had happened to Dr. Takashina and let out a small moan that the others didn't hear. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I've just been playing some Dark Souls, and uh, let's just say Dark Souls uh, damage sounds are really funny. They're just like, oh. <laughs> As Misumi headed for the impatient's rooms, I looked behind me. Three o five, random guess. This was a general hospital with any number of departments in it. I would guess. Oh, okay, not a specific number. <laughs> when she'd fallen, she hadn't looked like she was that badly injured. And if she was in a bad enough sh shape mentally to try and jump off a building, it was entirely possible that they put her there. It happened to me after the incident at O Front for some reason. Maybe not everybody, but I wouldn't have known unless I'd been here so many times. Rimi stopped just before we got to the impatient room. She waved and headed back towards the outpatient wing. Misumi and I figured that we just bothered the other patients if we wandered around, so we decided to ask about Ayase at the nurse's station. Just like I thought, they gave us a number of a room in the psych ward. Oh wow, I thought they weren't allowing people to come in. Neat. Maybe because we were classmates instead? Ah, oh, the slow ward. Seems like she's not in. The room was small and simple in layout. 
There was a bathroom on the right side of the entrance and a bed near the back. The evening sun was pouring in through the window on the far wall. There's no sign of Ayase herself. The bed was unmade, so she must have been here a bit, little bit ago. The window was open. The wind was blowing into the room, making the white curtains billow. It had been bothering me ever since I came into the room. I felt awful, negative delusions coming on, like she might have jumped out the window. Like if I looked down, I'd see her below, covered in blood, brain splattered on the pavement. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, if someone jumped and you went into their hospital room and the window was open, you might think the same thing, so I don't really blame him for that. I had to see. I walked towards the window with shaking legs, like a man possessed. I stood at the window. The sky was the color of evening. The air was crisp, with a scent of fall. What would I see if I looked below? Something terrible? I gulped, and very, very slowly leaned out my head and looked below. <laughs> There was nothing there at all. I couldn't see Ayase's body on the ground below. I must have been overthinking things. Relieved, I went to pull my head back inside. Suddenly, I noticed something. Okay, I swear if it was a D-sort, I would have been like, that should have been like the first thing you noticed. This room is like pure white and there's that giant sword by the window. <laughs> the window on the floor below ours, there was a towel there flapping the wind and it says something. I think it says... Sonome dare no me, which is like whose eyes are those? Yeah, it does. I thought it looked like a white towel, but I could see what looked like blue letters on it. The way it was flapping made it hard to read. I really didn't care about it anyway. Why should I care about the lettering on a towel? But for some reason, I found myself t trying desperately to read it. Yep, yep. And then I looked closely and saw that the letters said. Whose eyes are those? It's everywhere. I couldn't speak. I couldn't look away. And then... <laughs> just for you, Takumi. Just for you. An unseen hand pulled the towel inside. As if they'd known I'd seen it just now. Hmm. Now I think about it. Shogun was in a hospital. Maybe he's the, on the floor below. No, that was impossible. There's no way that somebody I knew could be occupying the hospital room exactly below this one. And even if somebody who wasn't a patient was waiting there for me, they'd have no way of knowing that I look out the window or not. There weren't any security cameras in the room. It was just a coincidence. It had to be. But what if it wasn't? Terrified, I looked back towards the door. Nobody was there. The door was closed. Wait, what about Misumi and Rimi? I backed away from the window. Feeling scared and creeped out. Don't think about it. Force yourself not to think about it. It's a coincidence. It's just a coincidence. I kept repeating that to myself over and over. Oh, there we go. Is it going to be that Chronicle of Gladiel or something? I looked up in shock when Misumi said my name. He'd taken a book off the shelf and was reading it. A copy of Nu? I have no idea what that is. New was a magazine that dealt with UFOs, aliens, psychic powers, religions, urban legends, strange phenomena, ancient super super <laughs> ancient super super oh, oh ancient super civilizations. I kept saying superlizations for some reason. <laughs> and lost technology. Anything even tangentially related to the occult. It didn't surprise me in the least that a girl who was constantly talking about crazy stuff like Ayase was reading it. <laughs> Mm, yep, Gladiel stuff. I'd never heard of the book, but I had heard the word Gladiel somewhere before. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it was when he looked up the D sword, I think. Where was it again? It felt like it had been really recently. Well, at the very least. You gotta say that Misumi puts in the effort to get the girls he wants. <laughs> Was he still planning on dating Ayase somehow? Last time she shot him down hard. Huh? You only freaking noticed it now? <laughs> Suddenly, I realized Ayase's D-sword was leaning up against the wall. Its shape reminded me of a space battleship that you might see in a sci-fi movie. 
Like, I thought you looked out the window. It is literally against the window, unless there are other windows in the room. But still, <laughs> every time I saw it, I was struck by how cool it looked and the way it combined beauty and cruelty. It wasn't glowing right now. It was just sitting there. But still, you could feel its heavy presence. Misumi showed no indication that he saw the sword. I guess normal people really couldn't see them. Hmm. So Misumi is probably not going to be a D-sword user then. Uh, it seems like Yua saw the sword, so she's probably going to be one. I mean, she's in the cover art. I mentioned this or talked about it previously, but obviously Rimi is one because she, in, in the prologue, she ends up being the person that stabs us for some reason. And she has like this circular wing D-sword thing, I think? Maybe... Maybe if I just took it without telling Ayase, it would be mine then, right? If I could get a D-sword that easily, then all my problems would be solved, right? I gulped and reached out for the weapon with a trembling hand. I went to grab the blade. I thought I grabbed it, but my hand passed right through it. I'd grabbed only thin air. I tried again, but the same thing happened. I couldn't take it. I couldn't even touch it. Was the sword not real booted right now? And since there was no shared awareness of its existence, it was just a delusion of Ayase's. An illusion, a dream, an afterimage. Um, this is a very nice wall and um window. I wanted a breath of fresh air, even though I just took one Yeah, you know, just just ignore me, Misumi, please. <laughs> Misumi was looking at me, confused. Okay, so I guess Rimi's not in the room. We waited another 10 minutes, but there was no sign of Ayase. Rimi, who supposedly just gone to the bathroom, was nowhere to be seen either. Where had she gone? I forgot she went to the bathroom. I thought that we would have gone to the room after meeting up, after she went to the bathroom. Oh, Rimi's probably visiting Shogun. Rimi, you know this place? Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> We asked about the room at the nurse's station after splitting up with Rimi. She might be wandering around looking for us. That's why I assumed. <laughs> I was nervous without her around. There's no way to know for sure if this hospital was safe. If Shogun was reading my mind, he'd know exactly where I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are right. <laughs> As I spoke, my face flushed. Me and Rimi, dating. I'd had some delusions about the idea, sure. I wasn't into 3D girls, but Rimi was a pretty big part of my life now. But when Rimi had offered to stay by my side, she'd also said this. No, we're Nakama. In other words, she saw me as a friend. She'd have no interest in dating a creepy otaku like me, obviously. And Rimi didn't seem like the type to want to date anyway. Uh, is Ayase? No, no, we're just going back here. Misumi and I decided to split up and look for her. Misumi checked the floor below, and I went to check the one above us. Damn it! <laughs> I was hoping we'd check the one below, because that's where we saw the, the guy. What the heck? I passed by an elderly man in his 50s. He was clearly a patient here. He was slowly staggering down the hallway, calling out for Ami, whoever that was. I ignored him and kept walking. Walking th around the hospital didn't really bother me as much as I thought it would. It's probably because I've been here so many times. Still, the thought of that Shogun might appear from behind every corner or open door made my heart race. There were those strange screams I'd sometimes heard too. They were bad for my heart. The walls and floor of the hallway were all the same off-white color. Some doors were open and some weren't. I peeked inside a few of them to see if Shogun was lurking around there. Each room had two beds, and I could see human-shaped forms beneath the sheets. Those must have been the patients, sleeping. But for some reason, all of them were turned away from me, and I couldn't see their face. There weren't many people out in the hallway. 
There had been an old man calling for Amy or Ami, and then a nurse. They'd only been they'd been the only two I'd seen. But I didn't want to stay here for too much longer. I wasn't sure why, but that's how I felt. The air felt heavy. It wasn't unpleasant, but it felt like I didn't belong here. As I kept going forward, I saw that the hallway turned to the right. There must have been more rooms down there, I thought, as I nervously uh, rounded the corner. What the fuck? Did we reach a void? Um... What? Are we in the... Are, what? I saw a wall right in front of me. Unlike the off-white the, of the other walls, this one was painted pure black. What, I mean, first of all, why would there be just like a turn to a blank wall? I assumed that there would be a door there. S uh, second of all, if there was a door there, why is there no like indentation or, you know, sign that there was a door? Uh, <laughs> why is it just like, it looks like it was also colored over with like marker, but like a giant one. Oh man. Boom, 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 boom. For some reason, my heart began to race faster and faster. I couldn't move. My vision began to swim. I thought I was just feeling dizzy and closed my eyes, but when I put my fingers on my eyelids, I could feel my eyes twitching beneath them. A cold feeling like ice worked its way up my body from below. I stood there, completely still, forgetting to breathe. I started at the back. I uh, stared at the black in front of me. It felt like it was pulling me, drawing me in. The endless black that continued on for eternity. Every time it does that effect, I keep thinking we're getting closer, but we're not. <laughs> there was nothing there, but somebody was watching me. I could feel the gaze of God stabbing into the back of my neck. It was far, far worse than it had ever been at the base. Don't look at me. Is he gonna turn around? Oh jeez. I used every scrap of mental power I had to force my eyes close. Only then could I breathe. Panting, I stepped back. I lowered my head, turned around, and ran. I headed back to the floor Ayase's room was on as fast as I could, stopping to catch my breath only after I'd headed down the stairs. I touched my neck and found it covered with a thick, sticky layer of sweat. It wasn't just my neck, my whole body was soaked. What the hell was that? Was it Shogun reading my mind? I could still sense the gaze of God. It was still hard to breathe, I was still cold. I felt exhausted. I want to go home. I want to have Rimi take me back to the base, and then I could stay there and never leave it again. Even if I did manage to find Ayase, she'd be annoyed, not happy to see me. Misumi was only here because he was trying to get laid. I was an idiot to play along with it. Man, that lo that felt like Takmi re like glitched out in a game. Like he reached the end of the matrix and he was just like, "Wait, something's wrong. There's a bug here. I should just go home before Shogun and Yua showed up. Those two could appear anywhere at any time. They'd be able to find me easily. I couldn't relax anywhere." I headed back to Ayase's room. I was staggering, barely able to walk. I had to pull my hand on the wall. I put my hand on the wall for support. Was Misumi back? I wondered. I slowly kept moving forward, praying that he'd manage to find Rimi. Yamai. Okay, maybe that maybe that old weird dude is going to be relevant somehow. I could hear the voice of the nurses in front of me. I looked up to see two nurses walking towards me. One was young, the other was a plump older lady. Ooh, that is creepy. I put my head down and I waited for two, the two of them to pass. I held my breath so that they couldn't hear how much trouble I was having breathing. I could tell that they were looking at me suspiciously, but all I could do was try to ignore them. When they were gone, I started to walk again. Somehow, I managed to make it to the nurse's station. Asa's room was in front of the nurse's station. I must have passed it. I groaned and wiped the sweat off my forehead. It still felt like somebody was watching me. Sometimes I feel like somebody's watching me. <laughs> I could feel a piercing sensation in my chest, 
My ears were ringing, too. I felt awful. If It seemed like I might pass out at any moment. I'd just been fine when I got here, but what had happened to me? I was in so much pain, I couldn't take it. I decided to get help from one of the nurses at the uh, nurse's station. Oh, oh wow, we have a CG for this. It's Hazuki, the only nurse in existence here. But there was only one person there. Evidently, she hadn't noticed me. She had her back turned and was muttering something as she worked. There was a clipboard in her hand. She was writing something on the paper it held. Wait, so... Whoa, whoa. Whoa. What, what the... F what is she saying? Cinco knows something. Oh! I met her before. It was Hazuki, the nurse. God. Oh, shit. Did something happen to her? She, she was, like, doing some chant that was kind of really creepy. Holy crap. Uh, that's right. This was a mental ward at AH Tokyo General Hospital. Of course she'd be here. I talked to her twice in the, just the last month. Perfect. If she saw me, she'd help me out immediately. Just then, I heard a beeping noise. It sounded important. Okay, so I... It was kind of quiet. But she said... Cinco no squiad or something like that. Don't know what that means. At all. Hazuki put down her clipboard and flipped the switch in front of her. The beeping noise stopped. <laughs> Evidently, someone had hit the button to call a nurse. She quickly ran out of the nurse's station. She seemed not to notice me. I was suffering so much, just a few feet away from her, and she didn't even see me. I couldn't stand. The vertigo was incredible. Helplessly, I went into the nurse's station and decided to wait for her to come back. I found the stool that she'd been sitting on and sat down on it. <laughs> <laughs> My head hurt so bad. It was like the earthquake a week ago. But the pain was different somehow, maybe. I wanted something to drink. I've been out of breath for so long that even breathing hurt. I took a quick glance around me. I saw the clipboard Hazuki had been writing on. I could see what was drawn on it. What the <laughs> fuck? That was a crucified. Last time I'd seen her, she was smiling as she'd written something on it. I thought she was taking down my temperature or the names of the drugs I should be given. <laughs> so, what was this? I couldn't understand. Yeah, that's a crucified. <laughs> I'd seen it somewhere before. I'd seen this terrible drawing some- Oh! Oh, what the fuck? Oh, whoa, okay, okay, no, okay, so she did draw the crucified, but this specific drawing, if I recall, was given to us by, by Grimm in the beginning of the game. Oh, so either she saw it and she decided to redraw it, or she is Grimm. Oh, man. Oh, man, I remember this because, like, I distinctly remember talking to me being like, man... Grim's into this guru shit, and it's really off-putting. I don't want to see that, but uh, <laughs> I guess I remember Grim trolling him by sending him like basically what happened in the Crucified, but in his drawing version. But I don't know if it was exactly this, but I think it was. My head hurt so bad. The stabbing pain. The prickling at the back of my neck. Still don't understand the black room. Don't look at me. I picked up the clipboard. There were several papers there, all medical charts. I flipped through them. What the f- what? <laughs> They're all the same? Okay, mm, okay, if that's the case, it's possible that she might not be Grim. If she- maybe she's- or maybe she knows Grim. It's definitely related to Grim because I believe he said that he drew it, but the fact that you draw the same exact thing every time means that it's a printout, unless the game just did like didn't want to you know draw another one but uh if it's like the same drawing like exact same then it's a printout if it's not there are some differences then it's probably you know he, they drew it every time the same one had the same terrible picture i flipped to the next the third one was the same 
The fourth too, and the fifth, and the sixth. Why? <laughs> they all had the same picture on them. This picture. It was crucified. Okay, that that's pretty interesting. So, hmm, is Hazuki grim? Oh man, in that case, Takumi was talking with a cute girl this entire time. The shipping crate that Na uh, Takumi and Ishijo called home was perched silently on the roof of an old building in Shinsen. Sena Aoi was coming here now for the sec for the second time. I don't remember her getting here the first time. Feel like it happened, but I don't remember. The first had been a few days prior when she ran into Takmiya and Kozue at the center street. She secretly followed him home. Ah, there we go. <laughs> That's how she found this place. <laughs> ah, they're they're hitting our bases while we're gone. Sena cold, spoke coldly without even looking back at Kozue. Sena had come here to sneak into Takumi's room. Takumi Nishijo wasn't normal. After talking to him several times, that was the conclusion she'd reached. She's gonna be going and say, oh my god. Oh, there's so much. And then <laughs> Kozue becomes like, so much evidence? And she's like, no, so much porn. <laughs> he was different from normal gigalomaniacs like Sena and Kozue. Either the strength of his delusions were incredibly intense, or he was receiving some kind of artificial support. Either way, his very existence seemed like it was unstable somehow. Something about him bothered Sena a lot. She was looking for a man named Hatano, and it was possible that Takumi Nishijo was connected to him somehow. She had no way of being sure. But if there was any chance, even a small one, she wouldn't rest until she ruled it out with her own eyes. As long as she kept doing that, she found her target eventually. That's what Senna believed. There was a padlock on the door. Senna gave a little snort and brought down her D-sword. <laughs> She'd already booted it. Whoosh! The padlock shattered easily. Well, he's gonna know that someone broke into his room now. <laughs> Senna had already seen that Takumi had left school with two friends heading in the direction of the station. <laughs> He'll never know. <laughs> And even if he did find out, she didn't care. Seno would do anything to achieve her goal, even if it meant making somebody mad or having them call the cops. She opened the door and went inside. <sighs> Filthy. The place was like a garbage dump. Seno couldn't help but wince and give a small moan. <laughs> it's so filthy! <laughs> Senna sighed and went inside the room without bothering to remove her shoes. Ah, oh, so rude. You got that right. <laughs> Senna ignored Kozue, who seemed strangely impressed for some reason, and went over to the computer. She turned on Takumi's PC, and while she waited for it to boot up, she ran her eyes across the contents of the desk. Mm -hmm. No passwords during this time. Come on, Takumi, you're better than that. I guess he believes this to be his safe spot, because no one can normally go in or out, so there'd be no reason to. And you know what? If you do this every day, it kind of takes up time. That's like three seconds per day, and that adds up over the years. No, I'm just kidding. She na her eyes narrowed as she picked up an old sheet of essay paper. I know that phrase! Kozoe had been looking over Sena's shoulder. She was jumping up and down with delight. <laughs> Sena, however, seemed much less interested in the essay than Kozoe. She flipped it over to see if anything was written on the other side. <laughs> Suddenly, her eyes went wide with shock. <laughs> what she thought saw there was... 
It was a drawing, right? Yeah. Hmm, she's going to recognize the formula, if anything, instead of the monster, I think. Seno is gritting her teeth so loud that you can physically hear it. Her expression was even angrier than usual, and his, her hand shook with rage as she held the essay. Created IR2? Her voice was quiet. Seno crumpled up the essay into a ball and crushed it with her fist. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> I got up and left the nurse's station, and now I was wandering around the hospital. My brain still felt like it was full of fog. I decided not to think about what I'd just seen. Somehow, I ended up at the stairwell. Misumi was there, standing in front of the window. I went from exploring the hospital to f feeling like I belonged here because, I boy, do I need a room. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Moskaste, Hashite Sagaste Danoga. So they are Batemosurze. Mucha Surne, oh my te. I wiped away the sweat and tried my best to pretend I was okay. Gimme to Kishimoto. Meets Kedaze. Ooh, good job. But I couldn't see the two of them anywhere. Then, for some reason, he pointed out the window. Oh, they were outside. They were talking to each other? Huh. I took a moment to catch my breath before walking towards the win- Oh, over to the window. From the window, I could see the outpatient building next to us. The outpatient and inpatient areas were separate, separate buildings. There was a walkway that led between them, but the two were a distance apart. The inpatient building was just a few stories taller, and from the stairwell, you could just look down at the outpatient building's roof. There was a garden there, with a planter filled with red flowers. It was a space for patients to relax. Rimi and Ayase were standing in the middle of the garden, facing each other. Ayase was wearing her pajamas. They seemed to be discussing something. The two of them didn't know each other, right? <laughs> oh man, and then in Takumi's visions, he just sees like a giant epic sword battle. <laughs> they seemed to be glaring at one another. Suddenly, Ayase took a step forward and slapped Rimi across the face. Even from here, I could see that she'd given it her full strength. 100% of her power, in her final form. Now Ayase was walking away from Rimi. If she was heading towards the connecting corridor, she might come back to her room. Ooh, that's gonna be awkward for you! I nodded. Rimi was standing there, alone. She wasn't moving. I hadn't heard anything like that at all. Misumi suggested that we pretend we'd never seen it. I eagerly agreed. We decided to leave Rimi where she was and headed towards Ayase's room. I was feeling a lot better than I had a bit ago. The gaze of God was gone. That awful feeling had disappeared like it had never happened. Misumi let out a soft gasp. He was walking ahead of me. I looked up and saw Ayase heading towards us. She was looking down at her feet. She seemed sick and pale, and was having trouble walking. Her expression seemed dark too. We ended up running into each other right in front of her hospital room. Yo, Shimoto -san. Ayase looked in surprise at his cheerful greeting. And then when she saw me, she gave me a smile that somehow made it look like she was about to cry. Why was she smiling just now? Because she heard about a me the mess at Ofront and how much of a fool I made of myself, or did she just like me? If it was the former, then it was incredibly depressing. He was already using his pickup artist skills. Talk about being fast on your feet. <laughs> He's like, progress, yes! <laughs> I'll come in. I'll say for her part, wasn't nearly as cold as she'd been to him before. She opened the door and invited us in. She didn't mention the fact that she just slapped Rimi on the roof at all. 
I wasn't sure whether she was just hiding it or if she just totally gotten over it in just this short amount of time. As always, it was impossible to tell what Ayase was thinking. Oh my god, keep your pants on, bro! Yusumi gave me a little thumbs up, making sure that Ayase couldn't see. He was panting a little as he went into the room. I followed him. I want to go home with Rimi, but... I didn't have the courage to talk to her right now. I didn't know why it had happened, but if somebody had slapped her that hard, she must be feeling pretty bad. And I didn't have the words to make her feel better. Actually, I kind of forgot. Another relevant character is Hazuki. She showed up quite a bit. Is she gonna get a D-sword? Uh... Ase sat down on the bed. Misumi sat down next to her, somehow managing to make it look natural in the process. I was astonished at his boldness. Seeing him go on the offensive to, was making me feel a little wed. Ase gave him a glance before fixing her gaze on me. As she stared at me, I didn't know what sort of look I should have on my face. In the end, I decided to look at my feet. He was staring at her hand. Evidently, he was looking for a chance to grab it. Um, should I not be here? Oh. Sure you are. You liar. I <laughs> He's not gonna like that. He's like, she ignored me again, this bitch. <laughs> Asa ignored Misumi's question. Instead, she said my name. <laughs> there she goes again. Even after her failed suicide attempt, evidently, Asa's personality hadn't changed. She spoke softly, unemotionally. She began to share whatever crazy backstory she had in her head. Mm, okay, when you overcome this ordeal, your D sword will be summoned. And Misumi is like, Dude, do you know what she's saying? And we're just like, I have no idea. <laughs> oh my god, this makes no sense. The black, the great. Black Serpent of the Wicked Hearts. Uh, Kamai Tachi. Isn't that the, the, the wind uh, spirit thing that can use wind to slice stuff? Oh, okay, blade held ready. Gladiel, I now I remember. I seen it when I first looked up. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I was right. I'd seen it when I first looked up the D-Sword. From what I'd read, the legend of the D-Sword originally came from old texts and apocrypha about the legend of Gladiel. Supposedly, anyway. Um... Yusumi <clears throat> silently stood up and walked towards me. As he passed by me, he put his hand on my shoulder. Um... You know what? You can have her. She's kind of crazy. Too crazy for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I said. He let out an annoyed sigh and left the room. 
don't don't leave me alone with her. Ayase seemed completely uninterested in Misumi's sudden departure, if she if she even noticed it at all. It was as if she never he'd never been in the room to begin with. She was always like that, always above everything that was going around to her. It was like she saw something different than ev everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't know that. It's a, a guardian of Gladiol. I think that's what you meant. Yeah. <laughs> Black Knight of Gladiol? Gigalomaniac. Did the words mean the same thing? とにかく僕は違うんだ。理想だって結局手に入れられなかった。神罰を乗り越えて、そうすれば剣は召喚される。神罰苦しみ、心的負荷の爆発、心の扉の向こう側、あるいは<笑> 精神的公務。言い方はいろいろ。僕、これまでにもたくさん苦しんできたよ。Hmm. So, in order to activate the D sword, you need to have gone through some extreme mental stress. For Kozue, it was the fact that um, I guess she was having a mental breakdown at the. You know, trying to understand her identity and the fact that she was able to read minds or something like that. And, uh, I mean, we saw... We saw Ayase at the uh, experimental site at the Ark Heart F Hospital. That was definitely a mental burden on her. Don't know about Aoi Sena yet, though. Even now, I was suffering. The whole country was laughing at me. The police thought I was a killer. Shogun and Yuo were threatening me. And then there was Nanami. I knew about that. I read about it online. But why was she talking about uh, to me about this? Five years? Five years of torture? She! Ayase began to speak, slowly, like a whisper. Sitting there in her pastel pajamas, fingers running along the creases in the sheets. There was no trace of the strength I'd seen at her concert. Was the fez I'd seen earlier, like seen then, even real? Uh, there was a small smile on her lips. いつもぼんやりと見えていた。な、何が剣でも何年もそれが何なのかわからなかったようやくそれがディソードだと知ったのは施設に入って4年ほど経った頃。Oh got her disord after 4 years of experimentation and mental stress. Oh, that's awful. Hmm. I wonder if the Gladiel story that she's preaching now is real. I get the feeling that it is not. I feel like she's just kind of uh, misinterpreting how the D sword works. I feel like the explanation that Senna gave made more sense, at least for what I'm thinking right now. But because she's able to confide in this legend and this story, and the fact that they, you know, people call it a D sword, it's, you know, the same name. I feel like she's going. To, she's trying to draw parallels between the story and the powers that she currently has. Mm. 
施設の職員が一斉に入れ替わって私は何ヶ月もいろいろな拷問をされて心が壊れてしまう間際に大いなる医師の声が聞こえてやっと召喚できたのよ拷問ってそれが神罰だった邪神を打ち破る力を手に入れるには純粋なる邪神が必要 A pure wicked heart destroys the wicked hearts Hmm, that's or the evil wicked hearts that's that's weird did that mean she was telling me to suffer more that if I didn't I wouldn't get the sword if so then I'd rather just forget the whole thing I didn't want to suffer I'd already been through so much just leave me alone I put my hands up to my head suddenly feeling an urge to scream as loud as I could but Ayase's voice wouldn't let me <laughs> All seven. Seven black knights. Destroy the, at the hands of Gladiel? Hmm. I wonder what Gladiel is then. Misumi and I both looked at each other and shrugged as we walked to the first floor. もう岸本のことはどうでもよくなった。いや、フィギュア。これまでの俺のポリシーはな、タク。可愛ければ、何でも許してやるだった。けど、そりゃ間違ってたよ。あんな強烈な電波、俺には受け止めらんねえよ。素直に、小杖ちゃんだけ狙うことにするぜ。ああ、メン、what do you call it? In out, out of the fire into the frying pan, <laughs> or out of the frying pan into the fire, something like that. I forgot. I wasn't so sure that that was a good idea either. Misumi already had a girlfriend after all. Oh my, Maji de Suguina Kishimoto no ano no miso o hanabatake na hanashi. Yok sanjipun chikakumo kite ra reru yo. Ore son kista ze. Ore wa sampun mo motana katta. You see, no ore gada zo. The secret was I was too afraid to leave because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> She might have attacked me. Ah, <laughs>、uh, okay. <laughs> I kept an eye on my surroundings as I walked, only occasionally responding to some comment that Misumi made. When we got to the outpatient building lobby, I could see Rimi standing there, looking a little spaced out. Old wind was rustling through her hair, and I could see that she lacked her usual cheerful demeanor. She's looking up at the night sky as if some big problem was on her mind. Oi! Rimi! When Misumi said her name, she turned to us with a sudden bright smile on her face and waved energetically at us. Bishi! <laughs> Seeing her smile made me feel relieved. I found myself running up to her. Of course, I couldn't hug her or anything like that, so running up to her was all I could do, or all I did. <laughs> She gave us a show of fake crying. <laughs> She's hiding it from us. I nodded. Misumi was behind me, but I could tell that he was grinning. He's like, <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. Evidently, Rimi had wanted to keep the fact that Ayase had slapped her a, sleep a secret. I hadn't intended to bring it up. Misumi, read the room. She gave us an awkward look and then stared into my eyes. Don't tell her that. 
Okay, what what kind of delusion are we seeing now? なんだ。それじゃ、必死にごまかそうとしてたのがバカみたいじゃない。屋上に行ったらちょうど岸本さんがいたから、つい気になってたことを質問しちゃったの。そしたら、機嫌損ねたみたい。A question? You know, I'm still waiting for the moment where we get we are revealed. Oh wait, whoa! I asked her to show me her sword. Hmm. Hmm. So she knows about the sword. Huh. Oh, okay. Okay. But uh, on a side tangent, I'm still waiting for the moment where they explain why we saw Rimi doing the crucified. <laughs> because like I feel like we're late into the first ending because we're eight out of nine chapters, but. It doesn't really feel like we're getting any closer to getting that answered. <laughs> huh? Did that mean Rimi could see the D swords too? I thought so for a moment, but I was wrong. Ora,タクが前にケンのこと話してたでしょ。だから、私も見たいなって。それで引っ張ったからなのか？意味わからん。岸本ってケンの話ばっかしてるのにな。the gladiola or something yeah the three of us walked side by side through the outpatient lobby this part of the hospital had evidently closed for the day because there were only a few people here there were however around 10 people around the big lcd tv in the corner the eighth new gen murder. God damn it! Mata, Atarashi new gen demo, Hokitanjane. Misumi whispered. I froze, but Rimi. <laughs> she quietly gripped, gripped my hand. The warm feeling kept me from being any more scared. I could feel the tension in my heart melt away. Rimi was my support. Rimi gave me safety. Rimi would stay with me. Maybe I was being a little too optimistic, but having her by my side kept the terror just barely manageable. I was so glad that she was here. Oh crap, what happened? Misumi had gone over to the TV and was beckoning the two, to the two of us. The others, patient young and old, and even the nurses, are, were all glued to the screen. What was going on? Rimi pulled me by the hand until we were close enough to see the TV. Nervously, I looked at it. And when I saw what the text on the screen said, I was stunned. Oh, don't tell me I'm alright. Was there an eighth killing? New gen killer arrested? It was... News about the arrest of the new gen killer. Um... Oh, that is Sua there. Hmm... Hmm... That looks like an adult. They cover their face. Don't really know what they look like. Uh, Hmm. Okay, specifically the crucified murder. Komaeda Shingo Yogisha, Niju Gosaides. Komaeda Shingo, age twenty five. Yogi Nitsuiteva, Sakihodo Shibuya Shode Okonavareta Kishakaike no Tori, Imano Tokoro, Ota Hisashan, Satsunga Nitsuite no Mide, Okano Jiken Ni Kanser Yogiwa, Kongo Tsuikyu Steiku Kamaides. Komaeda Yogi Shawa, Ota San Satsunga Nitsuiteva Yogi O Mitometeori. Oh, so he's admitted in the murder of he's admitted guilt in the murder of Ota. Wait, a zombie? And so he had to stake him to a wall to make him stop moving? What the hell? Okay, we know what a zombie is, but what? <laughs> Hmm. 
I, I couldn't believe it. The TV was showing recorded footage of the suspect being taken away by car. There were media everywhere. The light from the camera bowls making the scene the screen flash. There was a jacket over the man's head. I couldn't see what he looked like at all. <laughs> Rimi's hand gr gripped mine tighter. She whispered to me as she looked at the screen. Well, technically, that's right. <laughs> that, that's right. If they had arrested somebody else for the crucified murder, that means I couldn't have been the one to do it. I wasn't a sleepwalker. I didn't have multiple personalities. This proved that I was completely normal. And at the same time, it proved that I hadn't seen Rimi covered in blood there either. It hadn't been real. It had just been a delusion of mine. It was over. The nightmare I've been dealing with for the past month was over. I didn't need to be jumping at shadows anymore. I didn't need to be scared of the gaze of God. I didn't need to be frantically looking for the D-Sword. I didn't need to do any of that. So why? Why did something feel so wrong? The idea that Shogun had just been stalking me as some kind of prank didn't seem credible. Maybe I, th I only thought that because of my sense of what was normal had been numb for the past month? Hmm. My phone vibrated in my pocket. I said to vibrate like I was supposed to, but I still couldn't take the phone call in the hospital. I let go of Rimi's hand and headed out to the front door. I answered the phone. Did you even check the name? Hi. Oh, he didn't. So it must be an unknown number or something. Oh no. Uh, is Nanami in trouble again? Dare. I tensed up. Maybe it was the Toryanse song again. I checked the name on the phone. Unlisted number. But it was unlisted. I got a bad feeling and went to hang up, but. Mmm. Oh, nee. Mmm, okay. Nanmi, what'd you do? <laughs> How'd you get kidnapped again? The voice on the other end was in terrible pain, but it was, without a doubt, Nanami's voice. Nanami. <laughs> Give back my hand? Oh my god. Give back my right hand? I don't have it anymore though. Oh man, that's that's so creepy. <laughs> the Garo Froggy specialty shop was called Totally Froggy. <laughs> ah, good one. Someone at some point must have thought that it was a funny pun, but all it could elicit from Bond was a tired sigh. There were 20 Totally Froggy stores across the city and they were supposedly building more. The one in Harajuku was the first one that had been built, and it was it was a mecca for Gero Froggy fans. Ah, that was the one that Bond had decided to visit, and he was quickly regretting it. Uh, why are there so many people here? Nah, you are oh, why am I here? He whispered to Yua, who would accompany him to the store and showed him where it was. It, demo. It was right on Takashita Street, and there were countless young people walking outside, having fun and talking to each other. Most of them were completely ignoring the shop. Oh my god, the lines, the rows of Gero Froggies! The inside was small and mostly devoid of people. There were only about five people there, including Bon and Yua, and all of them but Bon were teenage girls. A guy that looked like Bon walking down Takashita Street with a teenage girl like Yua probably seemed like he was buying sex. And now here he was, buying her a mascot character that all the kids loved. What a perfectly stereotypical old perfect he was. Bon felt depressed. <laughs> and... Um, got it. 
かに見られてるような気がするんだよな、ね。Yep, yep, yep, it's the God's gaze. いい年して、自意識過剰かもしんねえな。あ、それ、私もです。最近、誰かの視線を感じて、たまに、すごく、怖くなるんですよ。なんで、俺だけじゃなかったわ。ユアちゃんの場合は心配だな。ストーカーに付け狙われてたりしたら。Well, I've also have trouble.、Uh, I also have experience just talking someone else, so I kind of know the, the ins and outs. そ、そんな、怖いこと言わないでください。ええ、安心しな。そんな奴がいたら、俺が逮捕してやるから。I am a cap, so don't worry about it. Von grinned and then turned to look at the Gero Froggy items on the shelf. First time. <laughs> Knew it. Ahmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmm
昨日若い連中と来たらもうろくに会話もできやしねえよ大体何だあの格好はもうそそうですねあ y u a suddenly stopped. She grabbed onto Bond's jacket to bring him to a halt as well. Me, me, take the side, Bond, sir. Uh, is it going to be us? Does that? Yua pointed towards a parked truck. Several cardboard boxes were being unloaded from it at that very moment. Okay, so it's truck? No idea who it's gonna be. They were being carried into the back of the Gero Froggy shop. Oh, the suppliers. What's the hot spot in the Geju Kairu? Genji Frog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I thought that was actually gonna be like the new edition. The frog he's clad in armor, ready to slay Oni. <laughs> Normally, the truck would have had a company name on it, but it was completely painted white. The boxes, however, had a picture of Gero Froggy and the name of a company on them. Nozumi. Oh, okay, never mind. Thank you, LLC. It's gonna belong to the Nozomi group, isn't it? Uh, Nozomi owns everything. Uh, time to go home and find out that someone broke into my room. Misumi and I parted ways at the station. I head back to the base. The whole time, it felt like I was wandering in a nightmare. I kept seeing Nanami's face flickering in and out of my mind, a, dif a different expression on it each time. Nanami was the type whose feelings always shown on her face. When she was mad, she put puffed her cheeks. When she was happy, she grinned so much it made you embarrassed to look at her. All those expressions in my memories came back to me one by one and made me feel sick. W what was that call? What had Nanami meant? Was that bandage I seen at her on her arm at school? Where was she now? At school? Or has she gone home? With Rimi's help, I made it to the roof. Uh oh, right now my uh, lock has been opened and someone has broken into my room. I felt so nervous as I asked her that I thought my heart would uh, burst out of my chest. I was a little surprised that I was able to get the words out. I've never been able to ask anyone for anything before. Mimi seemed lost in thought. Yeah, I guess, in a way. <laughs> Mimi said something so ridiculous, my mouth fell open. What the fuck? What was that noise? And suddenly... A high-pitched sound stabbed my ears. It was like a girl's scream. No, it wasn't! <laughs> the wind blew hard. The air shook around me. Oh, a crimson light blinded me. I turned towards the source of the light, unsure of what it was going on. There, on top of the shipping crate, I looked up. Sen Aoi was there. Yes, I knew it. Explain yourself. I saw Sena Aoi holding her D-sword in her hand. The light was coming from the flashing D-sword, but something was strange. The last time I saw it, Sena's D-sword had been flashing with a blue light. The sound quickly disappeared and the wind stopped. Her voice was sharp, her gaze was cold, I could see murder in her eyes. She was holding the essay with the IR2 equation scribbled on the back. It was all wrinkled, like somebody had crumpled it up. Why would Senna have that? Why would she even be here? The words breaking and entering came into my mind, and I realized that she'd been in my room. But why? 
だから It was Cozy P's voice. Now it was Cozy P's voice. <laughs> She's like, no, no, go away. She was behind Senna's back. She was clinging to Senna's leg and poking her head out at me. Her expression was incredibly tense. <laughs> Just as Cozy P shouted, Senna jumped. She raised the sword. Oh, fuck. Rimi yanked me hard and I fell backwards. I looked up at the place where I'd just been standing. Senna's sword had torn a chunk of, out of the ground. Its sharpness and destructive power were almost unreal. The impact had been enough to shatter concrete, but the blade was unharmed. I thought that the D swords were supposed to be invisible and you couldn't even touch them, so this proves to talk me that Rimi could see swords. And then I remember what I heard before. The sword must have been real booted. The four of us had a shared awareness of Senna's D sword. It wasn't a delusion anymore, it was real. And a, it was a huge sword with the power to cut someone in half. Oh, okay, since it was real booted, it's in the real world now. Rimi could see the, see the sword, even if she wasn't a gigalomaniac. If Rimi hadn't pulled me back, the beautiful blade would have sliced into me head first, and I'd have died instantly. My whole body started to shake. Senna had just tried to... to kill me. Why? My mind was filled with questions. Not too long ago, she, Kozapi, and I had been eating Gari Gari popsicles together. We certainly weren't close enough that I could call her a friend. And she'd still scare me. But it certainly didn't feel like she was going to attack me on sight with a D-sword. But why? <laughs> Senna looked up, glaring at me. She moved fast. Even though she was carrying that huge weapon. She got into a crouch like a sprinter at the starting line and began to run. The tip of the blade tore into the ground as she got closer and closer, and when she was close enough, she raised it high above her head. My instincts told me in an instant what was going on. She was serious. Senna was serious. I was lying on the ground staring up, helpless and pathetic. I screamed. I couldn't escape. This was just so unfair. So sudden. How could it suddenly be game over like this? All that time I'd spent running away from Shogun and now I'd die to a surprise attack from Senna? No, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. <laughs> it's the stress, the mental stress. And then, someone leapt between us, standing between me and Senna. I realized it was Rimi. She was standing between me and Senna with her arms spread out wide to block her path. Was she putting herself in danger to protect me? Okay. But Rimi, you'll die! I don't want that! <laughs> Suddenly, I remembered what Kozupi had said before. Pale light began to pour out from between Rimi's spread arms. <laughs> Rimi! <laughs> brought her hands together around the streaming rays of light. She unveils her D-Sword! The air shook around us. Shining feathers of light appeared out from nowhere and began to dance around Rimi. And in her hands, I saw... <laughs> Senna had brought her huge D-Sword down with full force, but she easily blocked it. The thing in her hands was far too elegant, far too holy, to be called a sword. It was like the wings of an angel. And then I understood. She, Rimi Sakahata. Was also a gigalomaniac. Okay, let's look at this. Hmm, even with that form, she's able to block a full, a full force sent up swing. <laughs> Ah oh, man, is that gonna be the end of the chapter? No. Oh, -ho! okay, that looks really cool, actually. Sena Aoi was looking at her sh in sheer astonishment. 
The winged sword that had easily blocked her own weapon was cl clearly a D-sword. If she hadn't used it many times before, she wouldn't have been able to block Senna's attack so easily. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> Kozue was looking down at them from the top of the shipping container as if she was a spectator watching a game. Her legs were dangling off the side. She was, Senna was more than a little annoyed at her behavior considering that how she just ruined her surprise attack. But her gaze was locked to her front on Rimi. Rimi's expression was pained. Takumi Nishijo was lying on the ground behind her, moaning in shock. Senna was only after him. She wasn't there to fight Rimi. This wasn't a manga or anime. It wasn't realistic at all to try to fight someone with a D-sword. She cut Senna off. Her answer was calm and sad, but clearly spoken. When she heard this, Senna's grip on her blade tightened even further. Well, well, uh, uh, well, something's gonna happen. <laughs> Takumi's gonna be like, oh gosh, she knew all this time, but she was hiding this from me. Senna decided it wasn't worth trying to talk anymore. She brought her weapon lower, ready to strike with it. Rimi, however, was simply standing there. With long strides, she could be there in five steps. Three seconds would be all it took. <laughs> Senna didn't hesitate. She charged straight at Rimi. She slashed Rimi with her D-sword. Rimi tried to block it just as she did before. But... <laughs> Senna's attack was a feint. The blade passed through Rimi's sword and her body. She cancelled the real boot. Right now, Senna's D-sword was just a delusion. It couldn't touch anything. It couldn't cut anything. It couldn't kill anyone. But that was just what Senna wanted. Rimi had been ready to block the blade and was caught off guard for an instant. By the time she figured out what had happened, Senna had already slipped past her and was just two steps away from Takumi. It only took an instant to do another real boot. Now! Takumi's terror string- we're, So we're just in the perspective of uh of Senna now, I guess. <laughs> Takumi's terror-stricken eyes were pointed straight at Senna. It made the real boot easy. The D-sword, now real again, was the only inches from piercing Takumi's heart. Senna. Hmm. Hmm? Hmm? That was a guy's voice. <laughs> was it the person she's looking for? The 40-year-old doctor? She saw someone in the corner of her vision. When she heard the voice, it stirred violent emotions within her. Her aim missed. And the blade only grazed Takumi's leg before slamming into the concrete uh, next to him. Senna slowly looked up. And gasped. A man was standing at the edge of the roof. The sun, the sun setting behind him. His countenance like a ghost. Oh no! Oh, it's the homeless dude. Wait. Oh, whoa. It just kind of occurred to me. They kind of share like a similar hairstyle and eye color. Is he her dad? His, fail his face was pale and ashen. His eyes were bloodshot and sunk deep into his head. His head was slumped forward and expressionless. When she saw him, Senna stopped caring about Takumi at all. It was a man Senna had chased for so long, the man she hated. Oh, I thought it was... Hmm. I guess it was this dude instead of the Nozomi guy. I could have sworn it was a Nozomi guy. The man who abandoned her and betrayed her family. And now he was right in front of her. <laughs> Senna took a step towards him. She gritted her teeth to keep the hate welling up within her from taking control. She readied her D-sword again. She took another step. Hats to offer up your mother as a sacrifice. What the fuck did you do? 
Okay, so yeah, I think it's gonna be her her father. Her sacrifice helped the whole world. The blood rushed to Senna's head. The man was now all she could see. She ran. Ooh, that guy might be dead. She got there in an instant. Senna closed the distance between them in the blink of an eye, and when she was close enough, stabbed the D sword deep into his body. <laughs> this had been Senna's most fervent wish. She spent every day wandering Shibuya just so that she could someday, someday kill him. She dreamed of killing him almost every night. She's gonna be like, goodbye, father. <laughs> She tried to pull out the sword. She tried to back away from him. But the sword wouldn't come out. The man fell forward and embraced her. All the hairs on her body stood up in revulsion. It was far too late for this. The bond between Senna and her father had long since been cut. Ah, yes, yes. But for some reason, she was in shock to find that she couldn't push him away. His warmth, his big broad chest, the reality of having her father here, right in front of her, Senna's hands were turning red. <laughs> oh, that was Rimi. She heard whispering, and then she knew. Errors slipped into the death spots. His psychic attacks. Okay, so that was all an illusion, but we do have confirmation that that is her father. Illusions. Her delusions have been read. By the time she realized what had happened, it was too late. She lost her balance. Both her and the man fell off the edge of the roof. Oh no, this is real. The ground, eight stories beneath her, seemed so far away. Oh my god. What the hell? All I could do was watch without understanding at all what was going on. So now we're uh, back to Takumi's POV. Senna suddenly ran towards the edge of the roof, and then for no reason, lost her balance and began to fall. Wait, no, never mind. The, the guy that isn't there. Her body was just about to disappear off the edge. She's going to fall. All I could do was whisper. I closed my eyes tightly. Suicide. Senna was going to kill herself by throwing herself off the roof. I didn't know why. I didn't want to know. She attacked me for no reason, and now she'd been punished. She turned out to be an enemy too. Oh, so... Rimi has the ability to mind control, it seems. Or at least, at the very least, make illusions. Oh, crap. What does this mean for the rest of this... For the entire series, actually? So we kind of... I wasn't... Okay, no, it is pretty surprising, but... I feel like that might answer why... Takumi didn't really feel like she was part of the class until she kind of made herself part of the class. And um, <laughs> all the stuff that Takumi was thinking about her demon powers might actually be real. <laughs> so maybe she did kind of assimilate herself to the class by just making controlling everyone's mind. But no matter how much I waited, I didn't hear the sound of her hitting the ground. Nervously, I opened my eyes to see what was going on. Uh -huh. Senna hadn't fallen, she was slumped over, and Rimi was right next to her. Rimi was holding onto her arm. Had Rimi saved her? <laughs> Senna had thrown away her D-sword and was crying like a little girl. What had just happened? As near as I could tell, Senna had just tried to kill herself. <laughs> What had Rimi done to Senna? She was like a totally different person than the cheerful Rimi I knew. Her face was pained, her voice was sad, there were tears in her eyes. The girl in front of me wasn't the Rimi I knew.
I heard a voice in my mind. Kozupi was still watching us from the top of the shipping crate. We're gonna thw thwack wham kerpow Senna. Mm. A cold chill ran down my spine. Kozupi was still using her cheerful anime voice, but I could tell that she was serious. もう終わり。もともと葵さんのこと、どうこうするつもりはないし、タクの前から消えてくれるなら、このまま解放する。それは、それは、モーリー。だって、コズピーとセナちゃんとタクミちゃんはお友達だもん。I don't know, but I feel like if I say no, I am going to die. Uh. I couldn't think about anything. If you told me everything that had just happened was a dream, I'm sure I would have believed it. Why had Senna attacked me anyway? Was Senna my enemy after all? <laughs> Senna looked up at me, her face filled with tears. She was still slumped over, and she hadn't even tried to wipe away the tears. She was staring at me with anger in her eyes. <laughs> Can you please explain? Because I have no idea what you're talking about. I was confused. I could feel her raw emotions. But what had, had I done? I'd never bothered anybody. I didn't even know Fesano's family. I was completely harmless. <laughs> She read my mind. Destroy the world? Was she just another crazy person who'd read too much manga? I turned to Rimi for help, but Rimi had her back to me and was looking out towards the evening sky. The way she looked, her voice, was it just me or did she seem very, very sad? But it sounded like Rimi knew everything. Formula? It felt like they were talking about me, but I couldn't follow the conversation at all. Kozubi came down from her perch on the shipping crate, carrying my essay. On the back of it were the scribbles I'd done as a boy. IR2. This was the cause of everything that hap was happening in Shibuya? Ridiculous. How could a bunch of scribblings on a paper that have that kind of power? I just drawn them to kill some time. I think? It was so long ago, I couldn't really remember, but they didn't really mean anything at all. I just written them down the numbers I'd seen in my dreams. It was a dream that had something to do with the subject of my essay. Whose eyes are those? I used that phrase for a long time, and then one day, I started to see it more and more clearly in my dreams. And in those dreams, I'd see the numbers. Fun and int and err. <laughs> Sana finally wiped away her tears. Her eyes were red. She kept talking, still slumped on the ground, looking at me with anger and frustration in her eyes. The world split? What does that mean? Back to the evil headquarters of Nozomi. Millennium 7. What the heck is that? 
Another name for the Millennium Prize Problem, seven math problems announced by the American Clay Mathematics Institution in the year 2000. These seven problems were all fiendishly difficult, unsolved questions in the field of mathematics, and anyone who answered one was to be given a million dollar prize. As of 2007, only one of the seven had been solved. <laughs> I love how I have to look up the definition and then they just gave it to me in the story. いえ。その7つの中には入っていません。ですが、実はミレニアム7は元々問題が8つあった。公開前に1つだけ削除されたのです。それが7つに組み込まれている方程式だと。削除された理由を世界に最悪を撒き散らす可能性があるためというところです。
あーし関東大震災クラスだとマグニチュード 7.9 だったかな Damn. 現在の建築基準と免震対策レベルを考えれば町にかつてほどの大きな損害を及ぼすことはないでしょう。Sorry, let me just casually do some war crimes. だが、犠牲者の数はファースト、セカンドの日ではなかろうおよそ5000人ほどといったところです。少なく見積もってですが。問題が責任は貴様が取るのだろうな。腹でも切って死んでみせますか、うん、Yes! これが最終実験です。サードメルトが予定通りの成果を上げたとき、ノア2は完全なる完成を見る。世界の可能性は、我らの手の中に。The world's possibility will be ours. We're still on this chapter. Hmm. No, I'm going to keep going. I'm kind of invested. Wait, this isn't an H game. No, I kind of do, or else she's still going to keep trying to kill me. <laughs> Rimi grabbed me by the hand and tried to pull me into the room. I could sense her desperation. She was afraid of something. Who was I supposed to believe? これが発表されたことで核兵器が開発されるという未来が生まれたようにうん、あみ、we all know, have heard of E equals MC squared where you can kind of convert energy and mass and、uh, based off the speed of light yeah, yeah modern physics is very interesting お前の生み出した IR2 もまた E イコール MC の事情と同じいや、それ以上の影響力を世界に与えている IR2 沈黙の兵器を現実のものとした。ち、沈黙の兵器思考盗撮、視覚投影、互換制御。Those were the technologies that Sena had told me about before, the ones in the patent. ギガロマニアックスは特別。いや、異常ではなくなる。これからはこのいまいましい力を誰もが自由に使えるようになるんだ。IR2 を元に作られた装置によってなもっともその前に一握りの腐った連中に独占され人々は気づかないうちに家畜同然の立場になるよう洗脳されてしまうだろうが I didn't know anything about this I had no idea Even if what Seno said was true I never meant to make anything like that I was just a kid scribbling on a paper I hadn't done anything wrong. Wow. So, then, so then, so no, I am too. I am too. So, then, Gigaro Maniacs, no chicara no goto, kipping, the sesmesta mononanda. Yapari, a no jisang, I did a no, a hot do that. 一番重要なのはその目誰の目を生み出した少年なんだって It just kind of occurred to me that like Skosupi met with Sena's father without Sena knowing <laughs> accidentally and now Sena's just like on the lookout for him I wonder if、uh, Kosupi knows I mean Sena knows that Kosupi has met that person before or vice versa それってタクニちゃんのコートだったんだね Kosupi's voice was cheerful But I wasn't as innocent as pure as she was. Rimi said nothing. But Senna, her eyes wide, suddenly looked up and staggered to her feet. Why did she seem like she was having trouble walking? Was it because of whatever Rimi had done to her? Kozu. Omae. Ima nante ita. Opi? Oh, I guess not. Opi? 
Sena began to storm towards a stunned Kozupi. I didn't know you wanted to know. <laughs> Neither me, nor Rimi, nor Kozupi had any idea what she was talking about. All we could do was watch as an intense fury descended on her. Okay, is that the end of the chapter? Oh, oh, no, it is not. <laughs> uh, I'm still kind of invested, but I feel like this is a this is a stopping point. We went through a lot, and this is going to be one of the longer episodes. But holy crap! So there's something with Hazuki, or something with Ayase. Ayase still eh, believing that this is the world of Gladiel or something. And uh, the seven black knights or something, I'm not sure. And uh, then we had that really, really intense conversation and confrontation with Senna. Oh boy, that was intense. Whew, I am kind of tired after that actually. But it was all really good. But I'm, I'm really curious where this is going to go. Seems like Takumi is really special because he created a formula that essentially has the power to fuck up the world. But uh, I... I mean, you're, you can say E equals MT squared did change the field of uh, modern physics, but I mean, the reason why it did is because he understood the concepts and how it worked. I don't think writing a few letters without understanding how things work would actually, um, <laughs> you know, cause that difference. But, uh, I don't know. I guess that's their uh, pseudoscience that they're going to go with in order to make the, all this stuff believable. But, you know, it's gotten pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, we'll continue with the, the story next time. Until then, I will be seeing you. See ya!